Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, Noodle here, and today we're back, back again, back with another Senua's Sacrifice, part three. Uh, we just entered the realm of Valravin, and yeah. Uh, here we go. <laughs> I am, I'm having to relearn the controls. It's, it's been a few days since I played. I wanted to make sure that the first two recordings came out okay. Oh, this is terrible. We're in danger. The price she pays for seeing things differently. Because once you gaze into the relentless darkness, all that lurks within it can see you too. Gross. All right, I got a feeling we're about to get into a fight. I was looking for Druid Stones. Alright, come on, fucko. Alright. Uh, uh, uh. Get some! Oh shit! Alright. Nah, -uh, bitch! If there's gonna be any cheap shot, and it's gonna be for me! Yeah! Oh yeah, really? We gotta watch out, there's a guy over there. Oh. Oh shit. <laughs> we moved the camera and there's a lot more. Shit. Come on, buddy. He can anticipate your moves. Anticipate this! Oh, shit! They're not winning. Hell yes. Hell yes. These motherfuckers again. Nothing on us. Will not stop her. She will find us. Okay. So here's the Val Robin thing. Let's see, how do I how do I do? Oh, there we go. Okay, so Val Robin's we... power of illusion comes from ravens, allowing the ravens to break his magic seal. Show me what you have seen, Truth. Oh, look at the hole in the wall. Hell yes. I visually I love our Robin's area. It's such cool camera play. And here we go. And now they're gone. 
I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones. We ain't gotta worry about this no more. Let's get in here. Let's get after this birdie motherfucker. Alright, so that was the tutorial. It's like crossing into another world that looks the same but feels different. An imposter world. By the forest itself. Is watching. Alright, so we're still keeping an eye out for Druth Stones. Um like I said, we're going to miss quite a few of them. I'm not doing like a 100% run here. All right, so obviously there's the birds. Another game. You know what to do. Stay back. It's not safe to listen to them. Listen, listen, don't. Open. You can do it. To break the seal. Align the ravens with the mark of Valraven. All right. So now we got to go figure out how to align these. And we do that with illusion. Do you see him in the distance? Fucking asshole. Alright, so... Looks like it's open over there. And we got nothing over here. All right. There he is over there. Visually, this is so fucking cool as shit. All right, let's see what's different. We got a we got a solid wall there, and then a hole here. He's up there. Robin. All right, so what does this do different? Okay, so it looks like the the stone stairs up are completed in this illusion. She can get up now. She can get up now. What's happening? She can get up now. How can she get up? It must be magic. Dark magic. A trick. Raven. Tricking her. Raven. How can she get out? Bait. It's him. Dark magic draws her closer. Yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. It's not him. It's a trick. She's doing it on her own. He's not tricking her. It's magic. It's an illusion. <laughs> I like how the voices are fighting whether or not Val Robin's helping us or not. <laughs> There we go. Let's get the hell out of here. Not finding many Druth stones. Tis a bit worrying. But uh, that's fine. Come on, Sandy, we'll open the door. Ha <laughs> ha. 
All right, here we go. We picture fear, and we think of a shadow in the woods, a creature in the night. If only it were that simple. The worst kind comes without warning. See, we could go in there, but we're gonna go this way. Primal signal from within. A reminder that just because you cannot see the threat, it doesn't mean that it's not already here. Ah, shit. I feel like maybe we chose poorly. Ah, oh, shit. Alright, fuckers. Take care of one of you assholes first. You can do this. Go again. Stop. Fuck your shield. Fuck your shield. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You cheap shot and All right, come on, come on. Catch your breath, Zenua. Catch your breath. Keep him in view. That fucking hurt. Fuck. Ah, hell yes. Oh shit, there's more. They're big attacks. I can't block them. So the only thing I can do is keep these guys unbalanced. That's right. I blocked you in a corner. How do you like that? Ah! <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe we made it. <laughs> oh, Senua, you a bad bitch. And look, it's a truth stone. The Northmen say that Odin and his brothers killed Ymir, and that the world of man was formed from his corpse. They made his bones into stone, and his flesh into earth, and his blood into the salt sea. They set his skull to be the bowl of the sky, with his brains for clouds. Odin and his brothers caught the sparks flying from Muspel and made them into stars. And to protect the new world from the giants, they used Ymir's great curving eyebrows as walls. So there we go. But we already learned all that crap last time. When Lily was talking about Ymir and the creation of the world. I know. I was paying attention. 
She may teleport me off in the null space, but I do have to edit the videos. Uh, hello? Oh. <laughs> oh, buttons. And magnets, how do they work? No oh, shit. You know what it's like to leave everything behind. Your home. Loved ones. To head deep into the wilds. Perhaps never to return. Senua does. Because when darkness speaks, it changes everything. There are lots of ravens everywhere. Foreign land and loved ones. Oh. Into strangers. Exile makes sense when you realize that you were never really home in the first place. Here we go. The Northmen say you must sacrifice in order to receive. They tell how the runes were revealed to Odin only in sacrifice. He hung himself from the world tree and he stabbed himself with a spear and he dedicated the sacrifice to himself. For nine nights he hung on the tree without food or drink. And at last, he saw the runes below him. He gave a cry and gathered them in his mind and learnt them. Then he fell from the tree. Yep. And that's how they got the runes. All right, all right, all right. So we got an illusion wall here. What does this do? It doesn't seemingly do anything yet. Okay. Maybe it's not activated. We've got to activate the door first. But there are lots and lots of ravens here hung all over the place. So this next puzzle tends to confuzzle new players. Um... Because you have to figure out which combination is the right one to open the door. And to do that, it's a process of elimination. So they're going to give us the grand tour of everything. Alright, can't go there just yet. We can go down, though. Let's go activate the door. Uh, before we do, I'm going to run around this side and see if there's... A Druid stone or something over here. Hmm, I don't see one. Alright. Like I said, don't be surprised if we just pass them up and you see them in the video. Like, Noodle, why didn't you see it right there? Like, fucking hell, there's a million and one things going on right now. Two Valravens. The song. Valraven. Valraven's song. It's over here. There's three of them, I think. We're, go we're gonna go this way first. There's two. Listen, focus. It's magic. It's magic. It's an illusion. I don't think this. This reminds her of The forest. Which forest? Forest in the wilds. The wilds. She left the room. She went to the oh, wilds. Oh, 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 oh. Why did she go to the wilds? So, there should now be a log or something. Yeah, see the bridge? <laughs> she thought she could beat her own. We need the bridge over that. No. <laughs> it nearly killed her, but she tried. Druze. Druze helped her. If it wasn't for Druze, she'd, she'd be, be dead. dead. She can't beat her own darkness. She wanted to marry Dillian. She came to beat her own daughters and marry Dillian. Yeah, so... Apparently she... Apparently her curse would affect him. Jesus, I, come on, let me she talk. Her curse would spread to him. <laughs> she thinks that's what's she going on to her and what everybody has told her is that her mental problem is a curse. The curse made her 
And, uh, and yeah, she was afraid that it would spread the Dillian, so she went to the wilds in order to cure her darkness, or to face her darkness. It almost killed her. Uh, and Druth, I don't know if you noticed now, but, uh, half of the ravens are gone. See? So many ravens? Not that many ravens. So, process of elimination. Um, anyway, so that's where she ended up meeting Druth. She almost died, she ran across Druth, and then he basically saved her somehow, or he helped her. So this, I think, gives us that bridge. Yep. And we can't get in there, but we can drop this bridge. Oh, look at all that color. <laughs> And I believe this gives us a hole into, yep, into there. So this is where people get very confused. We have to get up up there to that portal up top where Valravin is. Um, but then they get in here and they don't know what to do. We'll cover that in a second. Let's go down in here. I think there's a Druid Stone in here. There is. We hear what Druth has to say. The Northmen say that Odin is always in search of knowledge and wisdom and magic. There was a very wise being named Mimir who guarded the waters of wisdom which flow from the roots of the world tree. Odin wished to drink from this spring, but he had to pay a price. So he gouged out his own as an offering to Mimir. He drank from the well and traded one way of seeing for another. That's only partially the story. The thing is that Odin's eyes allowed him to see across all the realms. Um, and so when he drank from the well, not only did he get wisdom, but uh, he also gave his eye to Mimir. And that allowed Mimir to also look across uh, all the realms at the same time. Oh, no, no, this. So, we could go up top, through here, through the staircase, take us around top, but then now there's a gap to get to Valravin. Um, and the reason why there's a gap is because there's a giant hole in the wall. And the only way that we can fix that is by going back through the portal again. I think it's this one again. So there's the hole, and now it's gone. Ha <laughs> ha! But the door's open, so we can get in there. See how that works? Because we're fucking geniuses, that's why. Come on, Valravin. I got a can. The label's torn and worn, but I believe it says whoop-ass on it. And it's all for you. All for you. Don't run away from me. Ah, oh, you baby. All right, and now, Papoofy ravens are all gone. The ravens. Where have they gone? Looking back, I was so naive to think she could banish it on her own. The further she saw into the darkness, the more she struggled to see anything at all. And the glow, the smallest hints of shape, sound, thought, grew in strength until they consumed her whole. Before she knew it, the darkness had her in its claw. And I believe we got to do it from over here. Yep. Okay. 
There it is. Damn right I did it. There is no such thing as victory when it comes to the darkness. It's like it doesn't want to kill her. Yeah. Oh no, what her. Biding its time. Only when she is at her weakest will it strike to kill. Will she find Dillian before her time comes? All right, there he is. He's up top. Ah, whatever. All right, so we got to open up this gate. Overcome Valravan's final illusion to face him in his keep. We both see the darkness. We can fight it together. We got this. Uh, I don't think this is the way. <laughs> I think maybe this is the way. No? Oh, oh, okay. Let's see, how do, how do? Oh, do we maybe just have, oh, here it is, okay. So what we need is over there, that ramp doesn't go anywhere. We need a bridge. There we go. It made the tree the bridge, you see? But now, we can go do the thing. Speak to me, Drew. Tell me a story. Senua, listen. I will tell you the tale of a man called Findon. The Northmen captured Findon's sister, and his father sent him to pay for her release. But they took his gold put him in chains, and held him for a day and a night without food or water. Then they released him. I don't know why. Upon his return, his father's enemies in Erin set fire to his home. His father burnt to death, and his brother was killed. But he escaped with sorrow in his heart. His father's enemies offered redress for his loss, and invited him to a feast that was at a hall near the sea. But when he went there, they betrayed him to the Northmen, who enslaved him and took him to hell. Six years later, his slave masters landed on the shores of Orkney, burning all before them. And into that fire, Findon made his escape. What was Findon burnt away that day? But from the flames, a new man stepped forward, and Druth was born. Druth, the man that I am now. And though Findon never set eyes on his dear sister again, I, Druth, have found you, Senua. I wish he could have seen my home before these dark times. Oh, fuck. Oh, God, this is, this is so hard. Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> Those th we're like, you're looking and like you have to balance her left and her right, right? And the only cue that you get is the ground shifting underneath you. Oh, it's so fucking disorienting.
I remember. It didn't end well in the wilds. It never does. You think you can overcome the darkness, make sense of it, and once relief settles in, strong sun of nowhere, throwing you helplessly back into the maelstrom, drowning the mind in fear, deeper, deeper, dragging you down so far into the void that maybe this time there is no coming back. But there, in the darkness, Senua. and she remembered what he told her. Hear me. Reach out to me. Senua, take my iron mirror. Look into it, for it is a window into the underworld. Within, you will see the face of the darkness that you fear. And if you focus, like I have taught you to, you will also see that as much as the darkness has you trapped within its veil, it too is trapped within yours. Focus. 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 I see you. I see you now. You led me to the wilds. You trapped me there. Fuck yeah. Alright, fucko. Oh, shit! I forgot how fast he was. Yeah, how you like that? Fucko! You didn't like that, did you? Oh yeah? Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! I didn't think he was gonna fucking dodge it at me. Come on, get up, get up. I shouldn't have wasted it on this, but I needed health back. Where is he? There he is. Oh, shit. Give me mirror charge, fucko! Both of you motherfuckers! Get, come on! I'm not scared! I like how she's like, NOBODY CARES! Oh yeah? It's good, Dick Nugget! Get some! Oh, he is not the better fighter. I'm the goddamn better fighter. I'm a goddamn picked warrior. Ah, shit! Shit! Come on, come on, come on, come on, get up! Come on. Oh. Shit. You can't read dick. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get up, get up, get up. 
shit! It's so goddamn hard. <laughs> Why is it set on the hardest difficulty level? Oh shit! I didn't expect me to just jump into a fight like that. I wonder how far back it sent me. I think this is like the second round of combat. Oh, shit. Come on, fucko! By the way, this does not do the thing in combat where, like, if you lose too many times, it'll make it easier for you. Nope! This will continue to punish you forever. Shit. So I have fallen twice in the game so far? Take him down. Take him down. Shit! Okay, so this was just the first round of combat that it took me brought me back into. Motherfucker. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Come on, come on. All right, I need to back up. Let me get back towards the center of the ring. Come on, come on. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, here we go. Oh, fucking hell! That's bullshit. Oh, shit! Oh, that's absolute horse shit. Come on! <laughs> I don't know why she wasn't like running the full distance. Get some! Come on, fucko! Yeah! I'm learning, bitch! Oh! Now... <laughs> Now you want to fucking bring these little bitches in here. Okay, I want to make sure that there was nobody else like behind me. All three of them are in front. Oh, it's gonna hurt. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, come on. 
It's like she's getting fatigued and doesn't want to fucking fight. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't dip on me, asshole. There you go. Come on. He gets all fucking invisible like. And so you have to you have to focus in order to bring him back into visibility. Shit. Oh, fucking hell. Or you can counter. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't know why she's just doing like these little bursts. Damn right, I'm stronger than him. Ah, oh, shit. I'm like rushing. Oh, finally. Victory, bringing her closer to defeat. Unfair, isn't it? In those dark winter nights in the wilds, there were times when she considered letting go. If it weren't for truth, a chance encounter in the wilds, she would not have heard his stories of the Northmen. She would not have this chance to find Dillian's soul. I'm coming. I still hear you. Intense, intense. Oh, hello, Lily. Hey, Noodle, you ready for a break? Um, yeah, actually. How'd you like that fight, though? That was pretty intense. But here we go. Hey, everyone. My name's Lily, and this is my deep dive. In the last video, we talked about Ymir, the scream, and about the birth of the gods Odin, Vili, and Vey. And we talked about the creation of Midgard, or the world that we currently live in. But in Norse mythology, there's actually nine worlds, all held together by a thing called Yggdrasil, or the World Tree. Believe it or not, we've already covered three of these nine worlds already. There's Mesmoheim, the world of fire, Nephaheim, the world of ice, and of course Midgard, which I just said is the world that we live in. However, there's also Asgard, as you may know from popular movies, this is the world of the Asir tribe gods. 
Vanaheim is the world of the Veneer tribe of gods. And yep, you heard correctly, two different groups of gods. We're, we're going to talk about that later in the show. You also got Jotunheim, which is the world of the giants, where pretty much all the other giants live. There's also Alfheim, and that's the world of the elves, which is poorly portrayed in the second season of Sword Art Online, but it was named after the world because the game world and SAO have elf characters. Eh, anyway, I digress. There's also Nidavellir, the world of the dwarves. I'm pretty sure I'm mispronouncing that, uh, but it actually has two names. I'm not even going to try to attempt the second name, but this is it right here. And finally, the last world is Helheim, or Hell, and that's basically the world of the dead. These nine worlds became the entirety of reality, and the gods needed a way to keep them all together. So they connected each of the worlds by planting and growing Yggdrasil, the world tree. The tree's branches and roots connect all the worlds together, and by traveling along Yggdrasil, the gods can move around to the different worlds, and they can visit them as they wish. One of the more interesting things about Yggdrasil is that the tree also serves as a home for several other animals that live in the branches, in the treetops and down under the roots. For example, deep under Yggdrasil lives a giant snake known as Nidog. Nidog bites and chews at Yggdrasil, poisoning the tree with every bite. It and all of its little serpenty friends attempt to kill the world tree and bringing the nine worlds into chaos. Also living in the tree is a great eagle who sits at the highest branches of the tree. Uh, the funny thing is, is that the bird knows of Nidig, and it really wants to eat him, but he's got, like, no way of getting to him just yet. So, the two basically just pass insults back and forth at each other, using a squirrel called Ratatosker. Ratatos- Ratatoski? Ratatuli? That, this guy. Basically, he just runs up and down the tree, talking about he said, she said, talking smack to Nidog, and then talking smack to the eagle. It's a, it seems like a pretty sweet gig. There are also four stags that graze on the leaves of the tree. They're called Dane, Dvalin, Dunyir, Durathoror. For as amusing as some of these animals' activities may be, they actually hold a deeper significance in the stories. The image of the tree being nibbled away little by little displays its mortality and the mortality of the whole cosmos who depend on the tree for order and structure. The Nord's legends and stories all serve as a reminder that nothing is eternal. Not even the gods. The worlds, the tree, everything will one day die. And it seems pretty bleak, but one thing is made clear is that death doesn't mean the end. For at the end of the stories of Ragnarok, it tells of survivors from the end of time, and how they go on to recreate the universe again and again. Life and death are not absolutes, but cycles that continue with us or without us. In a way, I think that's kind of comforting. When we come back, we're going to take a closer look at the gods and goddesses that make up Norse mythology. I'm super excited. Anyway, I hope you learned something. Back to you, Noodle. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Let's, uh, let's get ourselves out of here. Thank you, Lily. When she was younger, she would lay in the grass and stare at the clouds. And as she saw them. Elusive. Shifting faces. After a while, she could see the faces everywhere. The trees. The mountains. The caves. Um, yeah, thanks, Lily. Thanks for the info about the nine worlds. That's pretty rad. I wonder. Can you see the faces too? They're there. If you look for them. Mother? Senua, you have the sight. Just like I do. Once you can see into the underworld. The underworld and all the souls within it will see you. Don't be afraid when they speak to you. I will always be here to guide you. Did you see her? That was her mother, Galina. She was a priestess, a healer. 
She taught Senua to see the weave that binds the world together. And it was beautiful. It was a time before the darkness. But when it did come, it first came for her mother. So, it's kind of assumed that her mom still sees her face from time to time, hidden in the world. Like she's still watching over. She misses her so much. Uh, yeah, it's kind of assumed that her mom also had uh, a mental illness or psychosis as well, and it passed on genetically to Senua. Um, but like... I said in the beginning, they thought that the the voices that they heard were spirits uh, guiding them. So, yeah. All right. With the mark of Valraven and the mark of Surt, you may cross the bridge over the River of Knives to Helheim. All right, um, I was going to do this, but it kind of leads into the next area, so we'll leave that for the next video. Uh, so when we come back, we are going to be pushing open the gates, finally getting our way uh, to the bridge to Helheim, where we have to cross the River of Knives. Uh, as always, if you made it this far, uh, let me just throw out there that I do stream on Twitch three times a week. Uh, it's very haunting background noises. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mondays and Fridays, we're doing a D&D &D campaign creation session. Uh, if you're curious about Dungeons & Dragons, uh, if you played and you want to join the discussion, by all means, uh, just hop on in. We have a great time. And then on Wednesdays, uh, I usually do Stardew Valley and Dead by Daylight, uh, but we change it up every now and then. Like, um, I don't know, do Legos or other random video games and stuff, whatever pops up. So yeah, hope to see you guys there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everybody.